When Jesus appeared to his disciples two Sundays in a row after his resurrection, what happened? And what did he say? Let's understand that peace from heaven granted to us in our doubts. We'll look at John 20, verses 19 to 31. And Jesus' appearance to ten of the eleven remaining disciples, and then to Thomas. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I'll not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Peace in our fears. What did Jesus mean by the phrase, peace be with you? He said it to the disciples on Resurrection Sunday, and also the following Sunday. Thayer's Greek lexicon defines it in this context as the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and content with its earthly lot, of whatsoever sort that is. The apostles began their letters to the churches with this greeting. Christians offer peace to friend and foe alike. Many churches passed the peace in preparation for communion. Jesus came to the disciples' fears and brought them peace from heaven. They were to be sent with the message of peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Sent proclaiming heaven's forgiveness. John 20:23 20, does not support confession to a priest as it's practiced today. The early church fathers taught confessing to God for most sins and in public for grievous sins. The current practice became popular from the 7th to the 11th centuries. Not one scripture indicates that this verse was then understood to be a priest-confessor act. Verse 23 literally says in Greek, If you forgive the sins of any, the sins have already been forgiven. They were already forgiven at the cross. As the Father sent Jesus, so he sent them, specifically the eleven apostles. Does this also apply to us today? Anyone who is sent in power of the Holy Spirit is sent with this message of forgiveness. Faith and Forgiveness Does Jesus here contradict his instructions mandating forgiveness in the Lord's Prayer? Forgiveness relates directly to the Gospel message. It's a message of forgiveness of sin to those who accept it. It also contains the message that those who refuse it will not be forgiven. Thomas saw Jesus' wounds, but faith is evidence of things without visible proof, according to Hebrews 11.1. A mystery. It is written that we might believe, and that believing we might have life through his name. All the disciples doubted, not just Thomas, Faith is given to us by God, 
God entrusts incredible authority to faulty disciples. We accept the message of Jesus, delivered by ordinary faulty people, and will be forgiven when we do. My Lord and my God, at the cross all the disciples of Jesus abandoned him. Jesus appeared to them and offered his peace. Thomas exclaimed, My Lord and my God. This was very personal. He didn't say, Our Lord, or even The Lord, but My Lord and My God. This is what is meant when people speak of a personal relationship with God. Jesus then went on to bless those of us who would believe, even though we've not seen, at least not with our physical eyes. We see Jesus, but not with our eyes. When we see Jesus with inner spiritual sight, we, like they, believe. And as Jesus revealed himself to those disciples, so he reveals himself to each of us. Jesus appeared those first two Sundays through locked doors to fearful disciples and stood among them, granting them the peace which surpasses all understanding. As we gather together on a Sunday like those disciples, he invites us in our fears and doubts to accept the gift of God's peace, saying also to us, Peace be with you.